It is finally here, this full detailed review of the Energy Flex 1500. A lot of you guys have been asking me about this unit for a very long time. And part of the reason why it's taken so long is because it has taken so long for me to get this. None of this is sponsored. I paid for every one of these units out of my own pocket with my own hard earned money just so I could bring these reviews to you. Now, if you go back to the very beginning of my channel, you'll see that the Energy Kodiak was the best solar generator at the time. And so that got replaced by the Apex. Now the Apex was supposed to be a big upgrade and you can go watch my full detailed video on the Apex and the results that I found with this. But basically it wasn't what we fully expected. And so then finally the Flex 1500 came out and we're gonna see in this video if it's exactly as expected. But just like normal, just like all my other videos, we're gonna do load tests on this, solar recharge testing on this. I don't have my extra spare MPPT charge controller for this yet because that is still on back order. We'll go over the dates on how long it took me to get this and stuff like that. So if you're really gonna wanna make sure you stay to the very end of this video, it is going to be quite surprising the things that you'll see and absolutely none of it is sponsored in any way, shape, or form. You are my sponsor, so go ahead and click that like button, and let's get right into this. Previously on these other models, you could add external batteries, but it didn't actually work that great. If you go watch my other videos, using these exact systems right here and how I added extra batteries, it didn't work exactly as planned. But now they do have these expandable stackable batteries, which is a really, really cool feature. And you can see that each one of them has their own charging plug here. It's got this really cool battery locking mechanism right here, which I really like. Let me go ahead and turn this whole system off. And so you can unhook the batteries right here. Well, you're supposed to be able to unhook it. This one's not coming undone. Push to unlock. I've got one side unhooked. Yeah, it's super easy on that side. Now see, that one slides really easy. And that one slides easy. So I can unlock that. And I can take that. So, well, let's do this first. You can see the battery connection here is quite cool. And the biggest feature, oh, the foot fell off. Okay. Uh, but you can see the locking mechanism right here. And it's got these large posts on here. What I like most about these batteries is you don't have to balance them before you connect them. You can just stack them right on each other. That is becoming more and more popular. On the bottom, you can see the cap for the battery connection it just pops on and off. So that's really nice. But the idea is being very similar to like how my Titans work that these have stackable batteries. Now, one thing is you have to remove the rubber feet in order to stack the batteries, otherwise they don't fit at all. So then you have to make sure you don't lose those rubber feet if you ever wanna disconnect them again. What I don't understand is why this won't disconnect. But you can see I'm putting a lot of force into that and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> this is kinda of silly. And what we'll do is we'll weigh this battery and then we'll weigh that complete unit and then subtract. So this is just under 18 pounds. It's 17 pounds, 13 ounces. And then we'll go ahead and, whoa. Okay, that wasn't good. Make sure that side's locked. <laughs> yeah, like it's almost too easy to unlock. Like I'm taking no effort to unlock this, but over here is completely seized up for some reason. So this is 29 pounds, eight ounces. So right at 29 and a half. So we're basically looking at 12 pounds for the top unit, which is extremely lightweight. See, I just knocked that lock off, just picking it up again. But it is cool that here on the screen, it tells you that there are two batteries connected. It can automatically sense how many batteries are connected. Now, obviously everyone's going to be asking, how does it compare to the Titan? Honestly, they are two completely different calibers. I'm gonna do a complete video on just comparing these two because it's such a common question, but there are definitely some similarities in the sense that it has expandable batteries and are stackable. Now to be completely upfront, I paid for this unit as well as all the batteries, panels, everything 100% out of my own pocket as well, just like I did this unit. I am not sponsored by either of these companies or units or whatever. I've not received any of the equipment for free, but just to be aware, there will be another video. So I will talk about this and this in that. The only thing I will say is the biggest complaint people have about the Titan is the back order, which is generally about four or five months. And I waited over 14 months 
for this unit and I still don't have all of the pieces. So I'll put a list of all the specs right up over here so you can see. I don't want to go over all the details. That stuff's really easy to find. But I did order an extra charge controller for this. But that is one of the cool features is you can add more solar charging capability to this and make it quite a large system, as well as the batteries. The Kodiak and the Apex, they came with the exact same wall charger. So that was one thing I was really let down about with uh, this unit here, is that they haven't upgraded the wall charger. This is the brand new one right here, and this is the one for my Kodiak. I mean, they are 100% identical. And that's one of the things I don't like, is we've come a long ways in technology just in the last five years, and they're still using this wall charger. We're at 108 watts. This one's getting 53 and this one's getting 55. So interesting. So at minimum, it's got that. For every battery, you can add a, basically a 55 watt charger. The problem is being completely honest and upfront, that's slower than 12 volt car chargers, which are usually at least 100 watts. So now I've put on a 270 watt load. Well, that's interesting. It says it's discharging at 273 watts. I wonder why, okay, there it goes. So for some reason, it didn't uh, factor in the charger going in while it was discharging. So it took a second, but it did figure it out. That's good. Oh, wait. Now it's saying discharging 273 watts again. I don't know if you can see this, but when these lights on the charger are red, that means it's charging. So we see we, this just went down, but they're going between charging and not charging. I've never actually seen this happen on a system before. So it has nothing to do with having two of these plugged in. Let me unplug this, plug it back in. It says we're charging. Yep, that went down. So this just shows the net. It shows whether you're making more or making less. It shows the total right here on the screen, discharging. But this just stopped working again. But either way, this is gonna take over 14 hours to charge. So it's gonna be 4 a.m. tomorrow when I get this charged up. So I guess I'll be back tomorrow. One thing I wanna say real quick on these wall chargers is they get super hot. So be very careful where you put them. Not that they're gonna start a fire or anything like that, but they get so hot that you can't keep holding it. Basically, all I'm going to test is if the inverter can run at its max capacity for an extended period of time. Basically, ideally, we wanna see the batteries go to empty. Now, with the Kodiak and the Apex, we were not capable of doing that. So hopefully, this is different. And let's go ahead and get 1500 watts running on this. We are running 1500 watts. We'll add about two minutes to this clock because uh, it took me a couple minutes to get everything set up and see exactly what our discharge rate is here. You'll notice there is about a 100 watt difference or so between what's coming out here and what's reading here. That's not abnormal, but that, that is definitely a, a pretty big difference, but I wouldn't be too worried so much about that. All right, so we add about two minutes to this. We ran for about 71 minutes, and the watt meter that was plugged into here said we had used a total of 1.56 kilowatt hours, or 1,560 watt hours from the battery. That's how much energy went out through the inverter. Now, the good news is we were able to run about 1,500 watts. It fluctuated quite a bit and got all the way down to 100 volts on the output. We were able to do that non-stop until it reached basically 10% battery life. So 75% is okay. It may have reached 80%. We could probably get a higher percentage of efficiency out of the inverter if we did a slower discharge. But either way, those are the results. Take them or leave them. That's just how it is. We've already seen how long it takes to charge up with the wall chargers. Now I want to charge it with the solar. Now I have multiple EC8 to MC4 adapters here but I only have one solar charge controller right here, which is perfectly fine. But I do recall when this first came out that they said it was going to be 500 watts of solar input and it's been downgraded to 400 watts of solar input. Now these fans got really loud when I was doing the high draw and they will continue to run if I turn off the inverter. But if you turn off each battery, the fans will turn off. So just be aware of that. Uh, but I do want these to cool off really well, so I'm going to leave those turned on. And then once it's nice and sunny, we'll go out and start charging it. So let's get to it. So we have a perfectly clear sunny day. It's the middle of winter, so the panels are nice and cool. 
There are no clouds in the sky whatsoever, no shading from the trees, anything like that. These are ideal conditions. Each one of these panels is performing at about 85 watts right now, which makes sense because the sun's a little bit lower in the sky. So just for reference, that's where we are. It's a charge parameter of 14 volts to 90 volts and up to 30 amps. So you can either connect four of these together in parallel, or what's easier and better in my opinion is you do series, which is one panel connected to the other. And each one of these panels is gonna make somewhere around 20 volts roughly. And so with these four, we're at 80 volts. You never want to put more voltage on any solar generator than what the charge controller is rated to. That's the easiest way to ruin your charge controller and cause potential hazards. So call it 300 watts, which means that each one of these panels are putting in only about 75 watts each, which is less than what they were putting in individually. I connected each one of these panels by themselves and they were each producing 85 watts equally. So we should, be at 340 watts input, but these powered portable solar panels are the best ones I've ever used. So that's why I use them because they produce the most amount of power. So hopefully you can see that pretty clearly. I'm trying to block out the glare here. Anyway, so each one of these batteries is 1000 watt hours. So with 300 watts of solar input, each battery will take just over three hours to charge, call it three and a half hours. So that means here, we're looking at seven hours of charge time. I can't charge this in a single day with the sun and especially not while using it. That's a big letdown. That's a big no-no for me when it comes to solar generators. That's something I look at at all solar generators is can it be charged in a single day? And then even better, can it be charged in a single day while being used? So for example, if I had my fridge plugged into this because the power is out and I need to be recharging it so I can run my fridge all night long. Well, your average fridge, you will use anywhere from 80 to 100 watt hours of battery capacity per hour, which means if I have a 14 hour night, I need 1,400 watt hours just to get through the night until I've got sun that I can start producing power. So having 2,000 watt hours of battery capacity here, that's enough to run a fridge for all night long. That would get it down to about 30%. And then I could recharge that in a single day, getting 300 watts in over five hours because there's an average of five solar peak hours per day. So I just take five hours times however many watts I'm making, 300 gives me 1,500 watt hours. But during the day, I'm still having to use the 100 watt hours per hour to keep running the fridge all day long. So once I factor that in, this can't be recharged in a single day without the extra charger that would stack up here with the batteries. But one of the things that I have seen advertised everywhere about the Flex 1500 is how many batteries you can stack on it. And I believe it's 96 batteries, so 96 kilowatt hours or 96,000 watt hours. Now, I'm not sure who's going to stack up that many batteries. Even with the Titan, which can stack 135 batteries, and each battery is twice the capacity as one of these, for some reason, everyone's excited about putting 96 batteries. But all in all, this system right here, I would need two batteries to run just a fridge to get through the night. But without a supercharger, I cannot recharge the whole system on a day like today where it's perfectly clear without having another supercharger and at least 400 watts more of panels getting a total of 600 watts into this. One thing is for certain, these foot pads keep falling off. So what's my conclusion on this? Well, I don't think I would recommend it for the reasons of one, really slow wall charger. Two is the output. 1500 watts is really not that big anymore. So unless you're doing something simple like a van life or just running a fridge or some small tools here and there, then it would work probably, but otherwise I feel like 1800 watts is the new minimum benchmark. And really 2000 watts of output is becoming the norm for minimum inverter size. The third issue I have is proprietary connections. Now I'm glad that they provide an EC8 to MC4 connector. So that's only one minor thing that I dislike. Uh, the EC8 connector is a great connector, but it's definitely not as common as something like an Anderson power pole. And then the solar input. Now it basically, could become a good enough system minus the inverter size, but battery wise and solar charge wise, if you get at least one supercharger, that would allow you to have 1200 watts of solar input and that being on two batteries for 2000 watt hours, you could realistically charge this in about two hours. What I would go with instead of the Energy Flex 1500 at a bare minimum would be the EcoFlow Delta. It's got 400 watts of solar input and has a 1300 watt hour battery. So this is similar to having one of these with just one battery, but it would be a little bit bigger battery and a little bit bigger inverter. They're similar in price, but you get more bang for your buck out of the EcoFlow. 
Now the EcoFlow Delta isn't expandable, which is where it'd be limited compared to the Flex 1500. So the next best bet would be over here. I have a review coming out on this. This is the EcoFlow Delta Max. I paid for this system out of my own pocket as well. Uh, but in the end, the one that has truly performed the absolute best above everything else is the Titan Solar Generator from PoweredPortableSolar.com. Where I do see this as a good system is something, like I said, like a van life. So that's where this would really excel is that DC power. And then for laptops and phones or whatever, being able to plug it into here would be enough, I think. Even with just 400 watts of solar panels and two batteries, because you're not gonna drain the system every single night. And as long as you got good sun the next day, shining down on your van, you're gonna perform really well with this, I think. I'm not affiliated with Energy. I don't get a commission on selling these or anything like that. This is just my honest opinion on what I have discovered and brought you along with me. But for these other systems that I do recommend, you wanna visit poweredportablesolar.com. I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my subscribers and I truly appreciate you guys commenting and subscribing and watching the videos. Uh, it's the reason why I do this. I love sharing and helping. And so until the next time, be prepared and I'll see you in the next video.